Hi everyone! Salamat sa inyong patuloy na pagsubaybay dito sa ating ginagawang discussion about statics of rigid bodies. In today's discussion, we shall be having a sample problem on the use of method of sections in the analysis of structure. And here is our problem guys. Determine the force acting on members CD, GD, and GF of the truss loaded as shown in the figure. Each member of the truss is 2 meters long. So we have here a truss that is loaded with 20 kN load directed from C to G at this point, And then another 30 kN load acting at C which is directed vertically downward. At A, it is supported with a hinge while at E, it is supported with a roller. So how are we going to start with our solution? So our solution will start with okay, solving for the reaction at the support. Let us analyze what kind of support are we going to have. At E, because it is a roller support, therefore we expect that there should be a vertical okay, reaction and we will be calling it as E sub E. While at A, because it is a hinge support, okay, there will be a horizontal and vertical component okay, and we will be calling it as A sub E for the vertical and A sub H for the horizontal. Now, if you will be taking moment summation about A and considering that counterclockwise be positive, then we shall be able to solve for the vertical component at E. Determining the moment arms of each of the force, let us define, you know, this distance are all equal to 2 meters while this distance shall be equal to 1 meter. So that, okay, moment summation, the moment due to E sub B will be equal to E sub B times 5. And the moment due to this applied load 20 kN shall be, okay, equal to the product of this magnitude and the perpendicular distance by the use of Pythagorean theorem will be computed as the square root of 3 and hence the moment due to this one shall be equal to 20 multiplied by the square root of 3 and clockwise therefore it will be sent given sign of negative that will be negative while the moment due to this one this 30 kN load shall be equal to the product of 30 and the perpendicular distance which is the sum of 3 and 1 and hence this will be equal to minus 30 multiplied by 3 and that is equal to 0. So that from here we shall be able to solve for the vertical reaction at E and that is equal to 24.9282 kN. Then afterwards we shall be okay, defining the magnitude of the component at A by taking moment summation at this point and we will be calling this as point H. So that when we take moment summation at H and assuming that counterclockwise also is positive, then we shall be able to solve for the vertical reaction at A. And what shall be our moment summation? Let's start with this okay, moment due to A sub B. A sub B will have a moment arm equal to 5 as the sum of 2, 2 and 1. And it is clockwise in direction about H, therefore that will be negative. Similarly, the moment due to okay, due to this 20 kN okay, shall be, uh, if 20 kN shall be resolved into component horizontal and vertical, then the vertical component will be equal to 20 cosine of 30 and the moment arm shall be equal to 3. Therefore, that is negative, I'm sorry, positive 20 kN load multiplied by cosine of 30 multiplied by 3 and that gives us the moment due to okay, 20 kN. And the moment due to this 30 kN shall be equal to 30 multiplied by the perpendicular distance which is from this point up to that point and that is equal to 2 and all of these shall be equal to 0. So that when simplifying and substituting for the value, cosine of 30 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Therefore, that is equal to 20 times the square root of 3 over 2 multiplied by 3 plus 
this product when 30 multiplied by 2 shall be equal to 0. And from here, we can solve for A sub B, which is equal to 22.3923. Then afterwards, we can solve for okay, the summation of force horizontal so that we shall be able to the component of A in the horizontal direction so that treating that directed to the right be positive and therefore we shall have here a sub h shall minus 20 sine of 30 shall be equal to 0 and sine of 30 is 0.5 so that a h will be equal to 10 kilonewton. Now after we have solved for the reactions, now let us try to identify what are those members that we would like to compute and therefore we are required to solve for this portion and these are part or either part of the structure. As I have uh, mentioned in my previous discussion, it will be better to consider a using method of section if we are taking the forces acting on the part or on the members that are located on the inner part of the structure. So therefore, if we're going to use the method of joint, then we try to pass an exploratory section that will cut all these three K okay, members so that we shall be dividing this into K2 okay, parts. We have the upper part and the lower part or the left part and the right part. It is up to us now to select what which uh, section are we going to use. Are we going to use this section or the lower part of this exploratory section such that you will have here your CD, you have here your GD, and you have here our GF. Or we may select the upper part of the structure so that again you should have here our CD, our GD, and our GM. And I suggest that when we select, we select which one is simpler. Is it simpler to use or to select this part or simpler to select this part? So when I say simpler, it I mean okay, simpler, simple in the construction and the force are lesser. So if we're going to compare, this one will contain one, two, three, four plus three unknowns. Okay, defined by this uh, three colored blue colored uh, K members. So, meaning we have to deal with seven forces. Well, this one is only have one external unknown, which is the reaction, and the three unknowns, which which uh, sum up to four. Therefore, I would suggest that we use this part when we consider okay, the method of section. Now, to solve for one of the unknowns. We need to establish an equation such that the other two unknowns shall be eliminated. And to do it, we take moment summation about the intersection of the other two unknowns. So that if we were to do it, we sum up moments about the intersection okay, at the point where the two will meet. So in this particular case, if we wanted to solve for CD, this one, we try to eliminate GD and GF, these two, by taking moment about the intersection which is at point G. So if we're going to locate that point G, so point G will be there, this point is our G. So that if we will be taking moment summation about this point, therefore we shall be able to uh, get the, mo uh, the value of the CD. Now taking that moment, which will be equal to zero and using that convention to be a positive what will be our moment equation okay we try to establish okay the direction of the cd minsan kasi ano yung cd natin ay hindi natin alam ano but we can we can determine its direction by defining by uh, again considering the moment equations or moment summation so if the moment summation should be equal to zero you'll notice that this moment will be creating a counterclockwise moment about this g and to counteract this counterclockwise moment, there must be additional moment that will be produced and this will be coming from the CD. And hence, we expect that CD, in order for CD to produce a clockwise moment, therefore, CD must be directed in this direction. Ba? So that if you will be applying that moment summation, so ang ating maging moment I, okay, your moment due to E sub V will be the product of this multiplied by the moment arm and that is equal to 24.9282 multiplied by 3. And the moment arm of the CD shall be the perpendicular distance from this G to CD. And that is equal to this line. And by Pythagorean theorem, okay, this distance is equal to the square root of 3. So that the moment will be equal to this CD multiplied by the square root of 3 and this must be equal to 0. So if we will be simplifying the CD, therefore CD will be 
at 43.177 kN. Ang tanong ay, ano yung kanyang magiging sense? Ito ba ay compression or tension? At paano natin malalaman kung ang member kapag ginamit natin ay method of section ay subjected sa tension or compression? Ganito yung sagot. Kapag ang force ay nakita natin directed towards the cutting section, here is our cutting section, ano? If the force directed towards the cutting section, then the member shall be subjected to compression. Kaya dito sa ating solution, dahil yung CDA nakita natin directed towards the cutting section, hence, KCD will be subjected to compression. While if the force is directed away from the cutting section, then the member shall be subjected to tension. Now, tingnan natin ngayon itong force. Okay, alamin natin ngayon kung ano yung next member that we shall be able to get. So, if you are going to solve for GF, natin itong GF, ano? If you are going to solve for GF, then we try to eliminate GD and CD. And how are we going to do it? We try to establish the location of the intersection of these two, and that is the okay, point D. So that if we will be taking moment summation about this D, natin yan, okay, that should be equal to zero. And if we will assign a convention that counterclockwise is positive, then what will be our moment summation? From D, the moment arm of EV is equal to 1. And therefore, the moment produced will be EV multiplied by 1. And that is equal to 24.9282 multiplied by 1. The counterclockwise moment produced by E sub B should be counteracted by a clockwise moment that will be produced by GF. So that if GF is to produce a clockwise moment, therefore GF must be directed away from the section. And its moment arm should be equal to this square root of 3. And therefore, the moment shall be equal to K plus GF multiplied by the square root of 3, and this shall be equal to 0. So, if we will be solving for GF, GF will be equal to 14.3923. And it is directed away from the section, the cutting section, sa makatwid, GF is subjected to tension. Diba? Ngayon, to finally solve for GD, okay, we apply the other conditions of equilibrium, ano? And it is uh, good to consider, okay, summing up force horizontal, okay, kaya naman, summing up force along the perpendicular axis about CD. But kung ano yung mas convenient para sa atin ang gamitin natin, ano, as long as we are sure that, okay, the unknowns, the correct, the computed unknowns are correct. So let us now try to solve for GD by summing up forces horizontal equal to zero. And using that, okay, direction, a uh, force directed to the right is positive. So, we shall be able to solve for GD. Now, assuming that GD is directed to the left, therefore, what will be by a moment, I'm sorry, force summation, I will have okay, the force, the horizontal component of CD, this one, which will be directed to the right, and this is equal to GD cosine of 60. While the horizontal component of this GF is directed to the left, therefore, that is minus cos GF cosine of 60. Minus this one will be equal to zero. And if we're going to substitute the value of CD and the value of GF in this equation and the function of cosine of 60, which is equal to 0.5. Therefore, we shall have here 43.177 multiplied by 0.5 minus GF, which is equal to 14.3923 multiplied also by 0.5. A minus GD shall be equal to 0 or shall be equal to GD. Therefore, solving for GD equals uh, GD becomes 14.2923. Okay, so, and this, that is subjected to tension because it becomes positive. Ano? Yan guys, yung ating uh, solution on the analysis of structure using method of section. At sana sa pamagitan itong maikling discussion ito, ay nakita nyo kung paano i-apply yung method of section in the analysis of structure. I hope guys na tuloy-tuloy niyong susubaybayan itong aking ginagawang discussion about static of rigid bodies. Sa mga susunod kong uploads, pakikita natin ang lapang mga problems about analysis of structure and that could be the method of members. Sana patuloy niyo akong sabaybayan sa pamagitan ng pag-subscribe sa channel natin at pag-share nitong ating channel sa ating mga friends so that they would also be notified about these discussions. Once again, Thank you very much for watching.